Welcome to the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. And I'm Tom Scholey. Going to be looking at uh, Steve Ditko and Jack Kirby collaborating. But first, Jimmy and I are going to be at CXC in Columbus, Ohio, October 6th through 9th. We're going to be at the Baltimore Comic Con the 28th through the 30th uh, doing Cartoonist Kayfabe business. Man, can't wait to meet you there. And Jimmy's going to be in a Jacksonville Public Library for a zine fest October 22nd. In October, that is Kayfabe-tober. Here are your drawing prompts, man. Uh, Make sure you hashtag us on Instagram and at us on Twitter. We'll be able to see all your stuff that way and uh, repost as much of that stuff as possible. You guys are super creative and can't wait to see what kind of art you generate from these drawing prompts. So, it's one of those great weeks where we have Tom completing the Pittsburgh Holy Trinity of comic book makers. The grand designers. The grand yes. designers, if you will. <laughs> Incredible Hulk number two, collaboration between... Jack Kirby on pencils and storytelling, and Steve Ditko on those inks. Yeah, and before we go too deep, I did want to show off like a like an earlier, you know, like the original color. This one's a little bit different because it's on my screen, but you can kind of see like just how different they do with their recoloring. Man, it's a uh, talk about a different treatment, you know, in these recolored editions. We complain about them anytime we show them. I think and and. I feel like a broken record at times complaining mm -hmm, about yeah. them, but you can see the dramatic difference yeah. uh, you and be, know, between these two. And beyond the lens flare, stuff like that, it's literally just clarity sake. Yeah. You know, you don't need to have this blue foreground thing against this purple background mm -hmm. thing. You solve it that way. Like the, the OG guys, they solve that for you. It is a limited color palette that it, that they work with. And we talk about 64 colors, but realistically, like, we're looking at about 20, 20 colors, 20 something maybe. like that. Yeah. And they learn how to make it sing on that newsprint. And so to recolor that stuff that's all built for a certain model, um, you know, we compare it to music a lot. If the stuff is mastered for, for vinyl and then you put it on CD, it mm -hmm. sounds different. And you see, like, just worlds of difference between these two treatments. Now, Jim, when you're working on Hulk Grand Design, this is how you're reading all this stuff. You have, like, files that you're I looking have both. at? Okay. I have boxes of Hulk okay. comics and, uh, yeah, digital copies mm -hmm. of a lot of it, so working on both. Yeah, so just for the purposes of this vid, we'll use this uh, masterwork thing. Did that one have um, the signature? Because sometimes the signature gets deleted in those old ones and then brought back in the it new It did one. have a signature, but it doesn't have Ditko's signature as part of it. Okay, yeah, yeah this, this one doesn't look like it either. And that's the cool thing uh, when you see this, because you see both hands at play yeah. throughout these pages, man. You see, you clearly see Ditko in there, but it's the bombast of Kirby. It's the pacing of Kirby. And in terms of visual storytelling, man, you know, ha having, having dinner with Uncle Howard Chaykin in town and he's talking about visuals for storytelling value is what art and comics is about. And that is the Marvel method, man. Mm -hmm. That is what the great Marvel method uh, pencilers and artists brought to the table is every single image is pushing the story forward. So, and Kirby's already a master at that stuff. Now we get to have the Steve Ditko finish. Fantastic mashup. Yeah, Stan Lee said Steve Ditko was his favorite inker on Kirby. You know, yes, he did. You know. um, and look at this. like It's uh, the Hulk as like a horror concept. Yeah. Seeing all this reaction and like the terror that people have when like Hulk's in town. Yeah, I mean, it, this is an early Silver Age Marvel comic and it is still a vestige of the monster comic the innovation 100%. the innovation is that you just it's just not you know Groot on one page one six pager and yeah. you know Fin Fang Foom on the next seven pager it's just Hulk yeah the full book aspect is a big thing and then the continuing story with continuing characters is like yeah. another big which they establish with Fantastic and Four and this is really that continuation of the monster stuff with like your aliens mm -hmm. as being a part of the story you know just issue two yeah. and we're already going into that, that and it, formula and it's total like lost in space zipper up the back kind of uh, alien costumes outer limits now, um, t in story terms, like thematically, we have the Hulk, uh, maybe not green at this point or whatever, but green in our minds. And they have these like toad men, kind of, they're, they're almost like a mirror of the Hulk. And a yeah. lot of the ways they behave in this are kind of like holding up a mirror to the Hulk. The way they talk, the way they, the, the smack they talk and how they're going to make everybody pay. It's like we're, see we're seeing Hulk held up to a mirror. So uh, the MacGuffin to get Hulk to be Hulk I don't think it's as fully established as just anger. It's it's when the sun goes down. Yeah, it's like That's werewolf right. stuff. Yeah, 
And it's it's uh it's it's clear it's totally a Mr. Hyde thing too. Like when I look at the early Hulk pre-color and stuff and you just like imagine it without yeah. the color, like it kind of he could just be a flesh guy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like just like a big brawny flesh Mr. Hyde kind of character. Did you guys see that Monster at Midnight story? It was like a monster story that they did a little bit prior to this uh, Jack Kirby and Stan Lee. And it, it's Jack, it's like a Jekyll and Hyde and it takes place in like a London, you know, 1800s or whatever thing. And it's like a hair's breadth away from Hulk. And then like a couple months later, they do the Hulk and just bring him into the 60s. You know. So Bruce Banner and uh, Rick Jones, they need to figure out a way to suppress the Hulk wh whenever he... Uh, turns heel at nighttime. So they found this kind of bunker that they're going to be able to push a cinder block, yeah. a brick wall, uh, to just keep them ten, locked ten, in. Locked ten in. foot thick cement wall. I, I love that And it visual. just takes one guy to like right. turn, turn it to, to move this thing that's got away a hundred times. <laughs> I was reading this, rereading this this week, and I was just thinking, like, could you imagine if you're trapped behind that thing? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not sure you could move that wall. No. I don't know if there's a tool that you could cut through it or anything. You got to get that e that Elon Musk submarine thing. And imagine if a villain got a hold of this while the Hulk's in there, and he just kept turning the crank to get that thing to, That'd like, snatch him. That'd be really good. You could tell that Rick Jones is plucky because he goes like this with his hat. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah, he's part of the young generation. <laughs> Bruce Banner wouldn't think to do that. Would you pick out Ditko's inks if you didn't know it? Yes. Uh, yeah. On, I, on various on various pieces. Uh, that's a Ditko drawing, yeah. right? That's that cool. does look like it. And and that's what you get. You, you see both hands, mm -hmm. you know? Like, that looks Kirby-ish. It's interesting how much Ditko inks these bodies in sort of like big full lines or solid blacks, but when we get into the faces, you get to see the hatching. It's almost like, uh, you know, just, I don't know, a different approach to faces. And I think, a he's, a, I think he's a pen guy, so mm -hmm. so we get to see what Kirby looks like with penmanship rather than like the, the thick, chunky brush inkers like a Chick Stone or like a Joe Sinnott who had that very deft hand with the sable hair. This is like 102 type shit. Our videos are brought to you by the comic books that we make on the stands right now. Jimmy has Hulk Grand Design, Monster and Madness, uh, capturing the entire history of Incredible Hulk comics in two tidy volumes. Uh, but if you want one less than uh, two, wait for that uh, trade paperback. Treasury Edition is going to come out early in 2023, Hulk Grand Design. Street Angel Deadliest Girl Alive is back in uh, reprint uh, for the Christmas season. Make sure you get your hands on this sucker. Red Room, Trigger Warnings, and Antisocial Network are my latest efforts. Uh, Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit is the name of the game. Every issue and every story is self-contained. So if you see one, scoop it up, give it a shot. Hopefully you dig it. And if you do, grab more. Tom is co-hosting with us this week. And he has Fantastic Four Grand Design, Out in the Wild, Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics. His biography comic of Jack Kirby is on the stands. Uh, support our channel that way by supporting our comics and we can keep bringing these videos to you with that in mind Let's get back to the video Jimmy. We got some Kirby motifs like a city that's pulled up almost like Asgard or whatever But he'll have like big chunks of city pulled up with like rock underneath. We got the um, the the oceans being drained like that um, OMAC double page spread like Kirby's doing like the tiny version of all this stuff He's gonna like expand later Hulk with a gun <laughs> <laughs> Be still my heart a magnetic gun, <laughs> turning it against his captors. And Hulk is, like, such a myth misanthrope in these stories. Like, he's just a nasty guy. He wants to hurt people. And Yeah, you know, they talk, like, uh, when Peter David does the Grey Hulk and Mr. Fix-It's personality is different than the Green Hulk's, it kind of goes back to this one. Mm -hmm. Although it also seems justified because humans are just, they mess with him nonstop. <laughs> and the Hulk is even like, I've got control of this spaceship I'm going to rain death on humanity. <laughs> and he doesn't. Like, he turns into Bruce Banner in time to not do that. But then that's what Bruce Banner gets arrested for. You were about to rain death on all of us. Do you realize how insane that is from, like, the, uh, the government point of view where it's like, if Banner did build this spaceship, maybe we should focus on, like, <laughs> the scientist that acts like he works with us and he's built this spaceship like mm -hmm. there's some technology to exploit here yeah, yeah this yeah, is like john carpenter's the thing we're, we're we're beyond uh operation paperclip where we <laughs> took the nazi guys so you know you were just born in saskatchewan or something like uh, we can deal with you but the, the constant mcguffin of of uh ah oh, bruce bruce banner you bastard yeah he's always that. in trouble and it it takes a while to dig him out of these situations. Like, how do you explain your way out of this one? Thunderbolt Ross, like, always just wants to call him a commie pinko 
mm-hmm. also. Oh, he hates a milk sop. Yeah, he yeah, and it's says there. and it's that classic, that classic shit, man, of like the old generation and the new generation. Like you, young pussy. He wants to call him you, fucking bleeding hard hippie. You know what? Well, we're we're the tough guys, and you're a lily liver. And and it's also that like. Lily liver. <laughs> we got mustaches, and you can't even grow one. <laughs> and and you know it's the, it's the it's the military cats and the dudes that you know dodged the draft. It's all it's all that shit. Yeah, definitely, man. This is where that that kind of like new coloring really makes the art stand out as something different. Yeah, you know it it looks like a video game or something on those, that last panel. <laughs> yeah, it does. Black bars, I think, is an interesting approach, man, because then uh, you don't have to like render out each. Makes your coloring yeah. a lot easier. Yeah, Kirby didn't draw black bars. You know Ditko. Yeah. That's a Ditko time saver right there. Yeah. And, dude, it's full-on invasion. Here's a real good example of, like, seeing Kirby's hand and Ditko in the same image. Mm-hmm. You know, we've seen a lot of Kirby imagery, and certainly that's Kirby-type hair. Yeah. And there's even proportions that are Kirby-like with the face, but those are um, Ditko eyes. There, I mean, they there is overlap. And yeah. so when... Ditko's ink and Kirby, that overlap becomes even more apparent. We got some great, like, Kirby sci-fi stuff of drawing the moon, this big gravity ray that's going to draw the moon to crash into the Earth. And at the very least, fuck with, you know, tides By and the stuff. way, magnetic ray. And I yeah. say that because I always think of, like, the Dick Tracy stuff where the magnetism yes. is, like, this big thing. Oh, yeah. It's so, it's so bizarre. It's like this little, little bit of history where it's like magnetism was what we were all into. That, I mean, that same thing was the magnetic telescope in that uh, Max Fleischer Superman cartoon. This is super cool, man. I don't think I've seen Kirby do this before where, like, let's have our dream sequence or or uh, this yeah. is just a headspace, vaporware that this Frog King is talking about. And you start it off and you end it on right, the same yeah. page. Yeah, it becomes straight and then you get the book in. This is a tool to use. That. Yeah. that is good, yeah, this definitely. Is, like, you can employ this into your own practice. Like, I could think mm-hmm. of a million different ways that, that this can fit into our own works. Yeah, I feel like we've talked off camera disproportionately about <laughs> about panel boards yeah. and and you see it in red room you see it in hulk yeah. grand design like it is a piece of the of the puzzle but i haven't done that that's pretty good hey guys full moon yeah uh-huh. so what's going to happen well it's going to go into full moon zine <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we have our heel turn look at that ominous figure dude going to hit you with some twisted metal that that is the most terrifying image of the whole deal you know what it really is and it's worked in so well like yeah. right into the canon it's perfect and also, I mean, he is a bad guy. There, yeah. There's a train coming. We we get. I don't know if we see the uh, the effects of that train, but that train is derailing. We meanwhile, while while we're reading this page, that train is crashing. We yeah, get, you know, we get a lot of Hulk Hulk You know, I mean, this is what makes it a superhero comic, though. He can be a, a, a monster and horrible, but he's got his secret identity that's nice. You know. Well, I mean, he <laughs> is making gamma bombs, right? Yeah. <laughs> but he's he's fitting into the is this social X Men insignia that these soldiers <laughs> are wearing. <laughs> Five parts. I, I feel like you did a great homage to that in Hulk Grand Design. I'm going to ask you a question, Jimmy. Uh, pull up that file, and this is a coloring issue that I was thinking about because, sure, these military outfits, green. Hulk, green. But is there a better way to solve that by just pushing the characters oh, well, out in a different color? And let's see what the OGs. The Hulk's not even green. Doing. He, is the Hulk yellow there? It looks like it's green. Very, yeah, yeah, it's very light. Yeah, but that's the, that's how you do it. Ladies yeah, and absolutely. gentlemen, that's how you fucking do it. Yeah, you you get em- these interns to color the this mass. shit and just separate forms. You know what is impressive though for being an issue too is how far along they are in the mythology yes. of Hulk in terms of, of Hulk, the way the world reacts to Hulk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, whether it's the town that he goes into and everybody's scared to death and running, or the servicemen or policemen responding to him, it's like. He's pretty, uh, they, they figured out how they want him to fit in this world. Yeah, It's comics. You're allowed to make these guys red for a panel, and then they could go back to their green outfits. There's a purpose for that. I wonder now, if you were to read this, that it would be like uh, communism, right? Right. How <laughs> dare you color those servicemen red? And he uh, creates an instant garage door, and then seals it back up. Yeah. Closes With it the back guy's up. arm out. I, was thinking, <laughs> that's, I read this stuff, and I just think, like, oh, that dude's arm, he's just destroyed. The oh, bystanders. Yeah. <laughs> Look at Jaime Hernandez popped in for a panel, <laughs> right? Isn't that so... Like, all the lines are perfect there. Pretty good. That would always mystify me as a kid when you'd see these drawings and it'd be like one line for them. Yeah. And, it's, and clean and perfect and everything. You know, you get a little bit more of it here. That was always like, I don't know how you do that. I wonder if they ever did a Hulk story where, like, we really dealt with some passage of time stuff. Because I think we had about three days pop mm-hmm. up uh, in this issue. And, and 
it'd be cool. Like if if that's a uh, a MacGuffin for your comic, that should be a storytelling piece at some point. For all the stuff that they have figured out here, I think the nighttime changing is something that they struggle with. Yeah. Because that becomes more and more of like, well, wait, how are you changing now? Like over the next yeah. several issues of Hulk stories, you'll see it's like different things that cause him to change where like they haven't quite figured that part out. And we know it is anger, but even that, it takes a little bit of time to like kind of, they don't explain it totally. It's just the Hulk keeps mutating and how he manifests keeps changing a little bit. These are the keystone cops of American military might because this boy <laughs> able to fend off whole soldiers. First off, he's able to run past them. There's a couple times whenever he has to get through all the, all the soldiers. Yeah, he just gets past them all and he's going to fend them all off. People with, you know, trillions of dollars worth of, uh, you know, American tax dollars going to their weaponry, getting getting uh, held back with just a fire hose. And Rick Jones, he's supposed to be like Ricky Nelson or Pat Boone or, or somebody, I guess. Like, yeah, some kid, kid pop star. And this is this is like a a Jack Kirby ending. Like, when in doubt, just create some giant gun that you shoot that like solves the problem. And yeah. it's it's not the greatest ending in the world, but it gets you out. And you've had so much great stuff going on up to this point. You kind of it's okay. You know, you got us out of the story. Story-wise, it feels like the kitchen sink. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, you have a couple of stories happening. It, it's strange, like, the military versus Hulk subplot that runs through all these stories, because you have other stuff happening. Like, that's a full-on outer space invasion. Yeah. But we still got to have the military going after the Hulk. Mm-hmm. Almost to the point that that sub-story takes over the main story. Yeah. I, I love this final panel. Like, this oh, is... Yeah. It's a beautiful graphic, and it's just... That's the Hulk status quo at this point, you know? And it's not... I mean, this is a character, a, tra- a traumatized character. He's in turmoil. Like, yeah. like, even if it's a happy ending, he still has to be in a box and shoved away. And yeah. not happy about it. It's, yeah, yeah it's, you're right. It's a tortured character. It's metaphorical. It's it's all about, like, keeping stuff inside and, you know. Visually, it's cool because it's almost like panels within a panel. Love it. Yeah. Super fun to look at the tandem yeah. of, uh, of Ditko and Kirby. There's that one great red ghost... Fantastic yes. Four issue. Might mm-hmm. have to put that one under the microscope sooner than later. Man, you guys good to go? Yeah. K okay, Fabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are out there. Jimmy, what you got? Hulk Grand Design. Speaking of Hulk, glad to do a Hulk story. These Both of these issues are in comic stores now while supplies last, but the big oversized treasury collection is coming to stores in 2023. So pre order that now wherever you buy books. There's about 40 extra pages in there. Super uh, cool fluorescent green cover. I'm excited for that book to be out there. And Street Angel Deadly Scroll Live. Back in print from Image Comics, eight complete full-color stories in this volume of the Homeless Ninja on a Skateboard. Perfect for uh, superhero fans out there. And you can join me on Patreon.com slash Jim Rugg to see a lot more of my comics and art. Tom. Uh, the Hulk shows up in Fantastic Four Grand Design and Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics. And please check out my YouTube channel, Total Recall Show, and I'm reviewing uh, issues of Thor one at a time every every Thor's day. And uh, it's also... Uh, October is Jacktober. Uh, every month, there's a different drawing prompt, uh, different Jack Kirby-related drawing prompt, uh, if you want to get in on that. Do you have a panel in here where uh, Stan Lee is at that event and mentions who his favorite Kirby inker is? Uh, is that in this? I don't think so, because I think that was, like, it was, it was Jack's funeral, or it might have been somebody else's funeral that was, like, after Jack died. It, it might have been, like... Jerry Robinson's funeral or something. I, I, it wasn't yeah. Robinson because no. we knew Jerry Robinson. Okay. Oh, no, Bill. not yeah, not Jerry Robinson. Uh, what finger might have been Bill Finger's funeral? I don't know. Like well, that was the seventies. Okay, something. yeah. I always heard it as Jack Kirby's funeral. Yeah, Jack, it was Jack Kirby's funeral that but he said it. Who knows? It. I mean, yeah. I, I heard it. We weren't there. Wasn't there. Right. Yeah, we weren't there, man. Red Room. Trigger warnings. Red Room, the antisocial network. Murder on the dark web for fun and profit is the name of the game. Each of these uh, volumes completely self-contained. Four stories in each. Scoop them up if you see them. If you dig it, grab the other one. Uh, I'm serializing new Red Room comics on my Patreon. Patreon.com slash Ed Piscor. Three books get you the archive. It's all this stuff, plus new Red Room comics that will see the light of day in 2023. But you get it first at the Patreon. Jimmy, what else do we have out there, man? Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts, merchandise, uh, fanny packs and more at our spread shop in the links below this video. Another great way to support the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel, given those marching orders will be on our way. Read more comics.